Fantastic. Shelley, it's, it's Scotty McClue saying dinky do to every one of you and uh, sending lots of love to all the listeners at Radio Telstar International. A legend of the radio world, a legend in my own lunchtime. <laughs> it's tremendous stuff. I've got you. We're also on Facebook Live at the same time. Absolutely, absolutely, and dinky do. Now then, what's happening? What can I do for you? <laughs> it depends how much time we've got, Shelley. If you've got all night, that's fine. If you've got about 10 minutes, then uh, I shall have to uh, dress all that up for you and put a big bow and a ribbon on it. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, as you know, I'm a very young man of an indeterminate age. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. And um, uh, I started, actually, I was an actor and went to drama school. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed that. I'd worked in a bank before, and uh, although it was great fun, I thought, no, no, I want to do something a little bit more interesting. So uh, I went to drama school. And then when I came out of drama school, I worked in the theatre, I worked as an actor, and uh, I also did a bit of broadcasting. And then I got interested in radio. I worked for an opera company and was their marketing officer. And I used to give a lot of radio interviews, and I thought, I would quite like to be sitting on the other side of that desk and talking to the nation. So that was the start of that. Uh, so anyway, um, they were looking for a newscaster for ITV. And uh, they said, they've seen 600. And I said, well, oh, I don't think I would get that. And they said, well, as I say, they've seen 600. So I went uh, for the job and I got it. And it was tremendous fun. So I was a newscaster for ITV for a number of years. And I met all sorts of interesting people. And then um, they were looking for a manager to set up a radio station in central Scotland. And at that time, there was only two commercial radio stations in central Scotland. And uh, this was the third one in no man's land in the middle of central Scotland. That was 27 years ago. And we set that up. And that station is still going um, strong 27 years later, which is an absolute tribute to all the launch team and a tribute to all the people that have worked there over the years and a tribute to the uh, the owners of the station of course so it's tremendous central fm radio and that's still buzzing away across central scotland excellent stuff and then um, after that i uh, got invited to go to red rose radio by uh, the program director is a gentleman called john myers a terrific character in the radio industry wonderful character and i'd met him when i was working at border television uh, and he said uh, we're looking for uh, for somebody to set up our phone in that had uh, very famous people doing the phone ins like a gentleman called alan bezik had done the phone in and another top journalist that uh, that had um it worked in newspapers and uh, I thought oh my goodness me in the first night I felt I'd been run over by a tractor uh, I thought oh what's this going to be like so that was the first night and that was Red Rose Gold 9.99 a.m. in those days medium wave was a great big broadcaster and a lot of the commercial radio stations had split into a uh, into two into their medium wave station and their FM stations so what you had there was effectively where there had been one radio station before uh, for independent local radio, and that was the one for Preston and Blackpool and a lot of the northwest of England, and uh, they'd split into two. So you had two radio stations. So there was Red Rose Gold and there was Rock FM, and there were both tremendous radio stations, fantastic radio stations. If you've just joined us, folks, a very good evening. Uh, I'm talking to Shelley McRobbie, one of the top presenters on Radio Telstar, international and we're doing an interview a little bit about uh, how Scotty McClure came into being so that was 25 years ago and um, I did that for about two and a half years at Red Rose and then um, I uh, applied to do something on the new radio station that had started in central Scotland and they were getting a bit of a tough time the existing stations were giving them a tough time calling them things like um, one of the managing directors had called them a poor wee chunter of a station 
So I went up for interview, and of course the questions I ask at interview is, where are your transmitters? What power are you broadcasting on? How many people can we reach at one time in this station? And when they told me, I thought, this is absolutely huge. We need to, uh, to do something about it. And at that point, there were about 3,000 people listening at night. So we went up and started uh, the Scotty McClue phone in, the Scotty McClue megaphone in. And um, at that point, of course, uh, Scotland had never heard anything like it. Phone-ins were big in local radio uh, because when needle time uh, was involved in it, they found that it actually saved money to put a, a speech programme on at night. And they reckoned they called it the graveyard hour at 10 o'clock. And of course, once all the uh, television talk jocks started and radio talk jocks started, it uh, failed to become the graveyard hour and became very, very popular. And a lot of them worked on to one o'clock and two o'clock in the morning. So we didn't play many songs. You could stick a song on if you wanted, but it was mainly all chat and everybody phoned in. And of course, at the moment, we've got a tremendous amount of loneliness of people in this country. And I blame the loneliness on the demise of the late night local radio phone in because these programs were immensely popular. So we took the audience from uh, 3,000 up to around the quarter of a million mark. It was quite incredible, quarter of a million people listening per half hour on a three hour program on a 2.2 million transmission survey area or TSA as we call it in the business. So that was what was happening there. And uh, I was quite, I was the one that was most taken aback by the success of it, of course. Um, the Scots just took to dinky do because everybody said the prophet has no honour in his own land. Not true, of course. And uh, had a tremendous three years at uh, Scott FM. It was owned by um, Grampian Television at the time. It had been set up by Grampian and Border Television, and Grampian Television had taken it over. And uh, they, of course, being an ITV company, were very excited about what you could do with radio because television costs so much to produce even a few minutes of television and they were amazed that uh, just maybe one or two people could produce three hour programs on radio so it was very very exciting at that time and radio became premium business everybody was very excited by it and the advertisers absolutely loved it they flocked to it and with an audience like that we added millions of pounds to the value of the radio station so that was very exciting. So uh, three years there, and then new owners bought the station, and they, um, they didn't want to do the evening phone in with Scotty McClue, so that was that. So I had to move on, but it was wonderful. I was working within a few days. I got a telephone call, um, again, from, uh, from a wonderful person on radio who said, what's happened up there? I said, I don't know what's happened up there. He said, well, I can't start you tomorrow. It'll be Monday now. What are we at? Thursday. Yes, it'll be Monday. So that was me back working again in radio. And um, I had also um, renewed my association with the great John Miles. And um, we went down to, uh, at that point, um, I, I did um, Century Radio in Newcastle. And then I went down to Hallam FM in Yorkshire, now part of the Bower Network at that time. It was part of EMAT Radio, which was the same people that had owned Red Rose Gold. So I was able to renew all my wonderful acquaintances with lovely, lovely people. As you know, Shelley, there's a lot of tremendous people work in radio. And um, I got to renew my friendships with all these wonderful people. So that was that. That was Sheffield. And then um, Century which uh, I'd, I'd worked for in Newcastle, they started up in the northwest of England in a huge franchise, same size as Granada Television. I think it's about um, 5.2 million or 5.4 million of a survey area TSA. And uh, we did the late night phone in there. It was a tremendous success. And uh, Border Television owned the uh, three century radios you had uh, century radio in newcastle you had century radio uh, covering manchester Preston in the northwest um, and you had century radio 106 covering nottingham and the midlands uh, over there and a good bit of yorkshire so it was a terrific setup at the time and we found we put the three of them together on millennium night we we're all waiting for what was called the millennium bug at the time and everybody thought computers would crash when the year 2000 dawned but we put on uh, the scotty mcclue hogmanay bash 
And uh, just at one o'clock, a lady phoned from Richmond. We united the three radio stations together and a lady phoned from Richmond. And uh, she said, I didn't know that programmes like this existed. This is absolutely fantastic. And we wished everybody a new year with a combined TSA of uh, just under 10 million people. <laughs> so that was again a wonderful thing. And then um, that uh, station got bought over. Uh, and I left and um, went to work for the wireless group and came up to Scotland and we were networked back round all of the wireless group stations at the time. So it was starting to approach a national radio phone in Shelley. And that was a terrific high point in my career. Uh, also, when I'd been in Manchester, um, I met uh, the head of sales one night and he said, you know a bit about classical music, don't you? And I said, well, do you want to know who wrote The Messiah? And he said, could you conduct the Halley Orchestra? And it turned out that the Halley Orchestra were putting on a massive concert in Manchester and they thought they would include just a novelty act. So Scotty McClure got to guest conduct one of the world's finest orchestras uh, in Thomas Arne's Sea Songs. It was like last night of the proms. It's absolutely tremendous and a very, very exciting time for me. And then uh, back home to Scotland, and I had a marvellous time up there. And then um, one of the radio stations, um, they were looking at um, closing the radio station, and um, I managed to uh, keep the licence, and we revived that for two years. So it was uh, it was a terrific uh, time, Shelley. I have had a wonderful, wonderful time, absolutely wonderful time in radio, and we've just celebrated Scotty McClue's Silver Jubilee. 25 years now now what we're doing a friend phoned uh, last year and said you're quiet McClure and when you're quiet you're up to something I said no no not up to something just working away quietly helping people out advising people on presentations what have you he said have you thought about doing Facebook live and I said what I mean would I need a computer for that he went no click the icon yeah, you old fool, you old fool. That's what I'm known as, you see. <laughs> so um, I clicked the icon just for interest um, late one Sunday night uh, a year ago, and uh, just over a year ago with a week or two, and um, everybody sent hearts and kisses and hugs and said, um, this is absolutely amazing. And um, I can tell you, McClue, we thought you'd gone and it was just a terrific experience so um from then on we've done 50 programs live on facebook live and what i would like to do shelley is build up the world's top talk show um and that's what's happening there and perhaps um some radio people might want to get together and uh, take the show syndicate the show and build it up but of course facebook live is a massive massive platform 1.8 billion people um, have got Facebook. So when you're talking like that, you're into global audiences as you are yourselves on Radio Telstar International. And it's very exciting when you get people from Canada and America and India and Africa saying, hello, Scotty, we're enjoying your show. Um, and we've had some very, very good audiences. I mean, when you think for a little video can earn an audience of 15,000 people, as we did a couple of weeks ago, um, it's quite humbling, actually. And of course, I'm known now as the world's top broadcaster. Um, present company accepted, of course, and accepted. And um, first lord of the internet and the world's most humble man. So these are tremendous titles, but I do genuinely hold the world record for calls to a radio station, 460,000 calls in one week. That was official on the telephone company's printout. And um, it shorted out the network. The uh, chief engineers rang the station and said, are you a business? And they said, we're a radio station. They said, what do you do at 10 o'clock at night? Competitions or something? And they said, Scotty's on. They went, Scotty McClue. Yes, OK, we've got it now. And um, it was shorting out the network and cost a good few thousand pounds to put right. The phone company very kindly took the hit, so it must have been worth it to them. And that was well documented in the press at the time. 
So uh, ter terrific fun. And then also I was writing for newspaper columns. I was writing for The Sun. I was writing for The Daily Record. Um, we contributed to uh, articles in The Daily Telegraph and, uh, and The Guardian as well, interviews for The Guardian. And it was a very, very exciting time. So I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, so much of the last 25 years. So there you are. I don't know if that fills in any blanks for you, Shelley. No, definitely. Otherwise, I have to connect. Yeah, that's right. Otherwise, I have to connect. Yeah, that's right. Otherwise, I have to connect. Yeah, that's right. I was singing actually at that time. I heard a bass so profound of voice. So that way. Tremendous stuff. So that was that. And I, um, at that point, we also ran the education. I was the director of education for Scotland's opera company, Scottish Opera. And um, we were in uh, and out of 900 venues. There are 90,000 people benefited from that over a four year period. It's just the great stuff. And then, of course, there's been other wonderful things that have happened. I mean, Ned Sharon who was the producer of one of the most iconic programmes that ever existed in television, fronted by the late David Frost. And uh, that was TW3, which was That Was the Week That Was, which was a satirical programme that went out in the 60s to a massive, massive audience on BBC television and caused um, terrific discussion about what was right and what was proper at the time. The producer of that was a very iconic man called Ned Sheeran. <clears throat> the late Ned Sheeran, the late great Ned Sheeran, and I got to work with Ned Sheeran on BBC Radio 4. So that was excellent. And then we went over to um, Manchester to do another programme for BBC Radio 4 with the great Jenny Murray called The Message. And that was when uh, McClue was under a little bit of flack at the time for not having a support network. But my argument was... Um, you know, if we had, because obviously if you're doing something for a national public service broadcaster, then you very often have a support network. You make announcements like, if you've been affected by this story, please feel free to get in touch with the following. So we used to do that. But um, they, they blamed McClure for not having, or they pilloried McClure for not having a support network other than himself. And my argument was that the late night phone in not only was of great service to many, many people, but also had saved lives. And if you saved even one life. So there you are. And I'm getting a big dinky do from a gentleman here um, who was a meal tipping, who was one of my finest. I've had been supported by these very fine people. If it's a gentleman, it's the wizard of the big switchboard. If it's a lady, it's the lovable lassie of the big switchboard. And Neil Tipping, one of my finest assistants over the years, and did a great amount of production work, and for that, I thank him. Oh, fantastic. Dinky-doo. Well, of course, I say officially that Dinky-doo is Roman. It goes back to when the Romans had taken over the country. And the Emperor Zero stood up and uh, waved his hand and said to the assembled company when they were going to walk back to, uh, walk back to Rome, Dinky-doo, everybody. And they shouted, Dinky-doo Zero. But um, I had a top historian on. We used to get a huge, wonderful social mix. And uh, I had a top historian on. And he said, I've never heard of the Emperor Zero McClue. So I think you've made that up. So there we are. So I'm, I'm not saying anything either way. But it's been a wonderful, wonderful phrase. It's a greeting. You had to say it if you came on the program at the start of your call. And you had to say it at the end. So even if we had huge arguments and blow-ups, Shelley, we always parted as friends. McClue always lets his prisoners go. Because we're going to do it all the next night, you see. Um, and that's, I think, why we had tremendous audiences with a lot of fun calls. Unlike what people say, we didn't go in for spoof calls. There's a couple over the years that uh, that were friends having a laugh. 
um, good, fine. So what's the problem with that? But the calls just came in thick and fast. And very often we had so many calls, I say 460,000 in one week, they couldn't all get on air. I mean, if you had maybe um, 10, 20 calls of an evening phone in for three hours, 10 or 20 good quality calls, that's a great phone in. We very often 50, 60, 70 calls to air, you know? And that's giving, if you think a program, you add your commercial breaks, a three hour program. So you're probably getting down to about two and a half hours. You've got your news breaks as well. It's going to be three to five minutes, what have you. And, um, you know, you're getting down to quite tight for time. So the way we looked at it wasn't how are we going to fill the time? We always looked at it as we, we don't have enough time, three hours. We really have to get going. You know, and that, that was it. Hmm. Oh, the fox at McClue Towers in the grounds. Yes, very often after the late night show when I would walk the dog, you get followed by the urban fox. Now, there's a lovely picture of one on the Facebook page that we actually saw um, a, at the radio station. It came to see us at the radio station. It was very tame. I was sitting on the bonnet of my car when I had a huge black Labrador inside going bananas going, wow, 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 wow. And the fox is looking in the windscreen as if to say, what's your problem? And I... I Absolutely amazing. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, I get followed home um, with the dog and the fox maybe six foot away. And the fox runs in and goes, you stay here. It must be I can smell you. I don't know what fox's interest is. Um, I've got your aftershave, McClure. You live here. Get me some biscuits. And uh, very often a couple of little dog biscuits and they'll come. Um, oh, last week we had one six inches away from my foot. And they obviously look Oh, they are absolutely stunning. They're beautiful. They're just little creatures like you and I, trying to get a living, trying to get by, Shelley. And if, if you look on Scotty McClure's YouTube, you'll see a visitor to McClure Towers. Yes, everybody needs to subscribe to that. We've only got, we've got um, something like 300,000 um, have viewed it, but we've only got 1,030 uh, subscribers. So, everybody subscribe. You just put in Scotty McClure YouTube, um, you know, or uh, scottymcleuryoutube.com forward slash user forward slash Scotty McClure 1. Yes. I don't think I'd do anything different, to be quite honest. I don't think I'd do anything different because these were very great days in radio. But what excites me is not even the past. Uh, the present is wonderful, but the future, the future is so exciting. And I would say to anybody thinking, getting involved in radio, do it. You know, everybody uh, uh, gives radio a tough time at the moment. They say it's not what it was. They've just got jukeboxes and they're just playing out music. Yes, of course. Uh, you know, a small handful of, uh, of big companies have bought up a lot of local radio stations and they would like to just put out maybe one programme covering all the radio stations, what have you. But there's an element of deregulation that's coming in the radio industry and Yes, yes, and it's very, very exciting. So, I mean, what we can have now, you've got so many platforms. The only thing it does do, it fragments the audience. And, uh, you know, there's a slightly smaller share of the big advertising cake. But if you're doing something that's fun and exciting, like hopefully I would say Scotty McClue's doing right now, um, and embracing the latest technology, as you guys are doing right now, then there's nothing to stop radio just going boom time again. Mm. Yes. Yes. Radio's there, it's absolutely there. And in fact, it's not old technology, it's actually newer technology than the internet, because wireless, 
through the airwaves and when the internet was fully wired um you know it was it was actually older technology because you're joining everyone's computer up together but what you're doing is having to force all the information down a big pipe which could go through the airwaves on a frequency so of course we're getting wireless technology coming into internet technology and that's coming big style the phones are the ones so what you've got there with the phones is you've got the chance for huge huge audiences again and what i would say is um, i would love to get my hands on uh, a company that uh, wants to go multi-platform yeah and do all the things embrace everything that the internet offers and um, go out particularly if that company owned telephones as some of the big media providers do so if they owned telephones and said to their subscribers use our phones you know use our phones do your phone in i mean i can see what i'm doing at the moment being picked up by a very very um, ahead thinking company that says this guy does something is uh, i got paid a great compliment the other day they said he's unique he's unique because there are not many middle-aged scotsmen um sitting up for an hour in vision shouting the odds without a script <laughs> well we all do that but so what i mean who's bothered about that people love you for what you do you know you wouldn't be you and you wouldn't be real and you wouldn't be live and you are Shelley McRobbie and uh, you know you're heading for stardom and I'm telling you that now yes and and the only person that has to make a decision about that is you <laughs> well I mean it's it, it it's it's a fact of life. The other thing I used to say to people, occasionally, like any business, radio had one or two people that thought they had to scramble over the top of somebody else to get where they wanted to be. You don't have to do that. There's room for everyone. Yeah, yes. And we said, this is where it's at. And uh, if anybody's got a problem with Scotty McClue, that's their problem. You know, and and I'll tell you another thing that's very interesting. Um, you know, we've never ever we've only uh, yes, people like to complain about what you do, but I've only had one complaint upheld in twenty five years. You know, no. You haven't a clue what they're going to say. You also can't actually prep for your show. And we didn't have uh, we didn't have search engines in those days. So what you had to do is just completely work off your own knowledge at the top of your head. Well, I've had to stand in front of the regulator and explain, uh, you know, uh, why I've said something and what I've said. And one or two of the treasures that I've got in the uh, the McClure archives, um, one is uh, a letter from a very, very distinguished lady who was very high up in broadcasting regulation and, um, you know, very famous and uh, had a very famous husband. And uh, she said, I thought Scotty argued his case rather well. Full marks. <laughs> you know and and that was tremendous and that was a shock even to to some of the radio controllers that thought you know i mean i hope this goes your way scotty you know and i said it will do because i can tell you exactly what i said you can listen to what i said and here's why i said it yes Yes, and you see, you're talking to everyone. I mean, I've been so surprised over the years when people have told me who some of my listeners actually are. And I think, wow, this is, if, if you ever wanted to be genuinely humbled, 
this is humbling. You know, they'd say, well, I'm going to tell you, Scotty, who's a fan of your show. And then they mention, and you think, I, I, I can't believe that. I can't get my head around that. They say, well, I can tell you right now. Yep, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's people don't realize what it's like and your good self i mean you're doing a fantastic job there you're sitting there and you're doing it and nobody can ever take that away from you you know it is fun isn't it and i mean once you lose the idea of fun the game's up you know Yes, that's it. That, that's when the game's on. And, um, you know, you're learning something all the time. Life is just one great learning curve. And I think, you know, you sometimes meet people that go, oh, yes, yes, I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know all about that. Um, and you think, oh, well, good luck to you. Because there's never anything wrong with asking the question, how does that work? What's involved in that? Hmm. We have to go. Listen, it's been a privilege. Thank you, Shelley, for having me on your wonderful show. Say hi to your big boss. Uh, you know, your big boss. Say Scotty McClue's a big fan of his. Uh, there we are. And um, and I hope everything goes fantastically well for Radio Telstar International. It will do because you've got great people working with you and you are a great lady. And um, I can't say fairer than that unless I can't pronounce my F's or my THs. To come do the show with you. <laughs> That's that's one of the bravest things you've ever said. <laughs> Take great care, Shelley, and uh, lots of love to everyone. And love to your listeners. And as we say in the best of circles, dinky-doo. Night, night, Angel. <laughs> there we go. Right, that was uh, Shelley McRobbie, folks, um, of Radio Telstar International. Um, I, sorry I couldn't read out all your messages at the time. I'll take a right good look at them, but we thought we'd also go live on Facebook and just bring you that um, early week pop-up. Uh, so that's what's happening there. And uh, So there you are. All I can say is turn off your TV and get the true news from Scotty McClure, says Neil Tipping, a fine, fine fellow. Uh, Peter Boy's watching Dinky Doo, Jimmy Ramsey, Gerald Mackay Mackay. Tremendous stuff, guys. Lovely to be with you this evening. I hope you enjoyed um, that interview. Now, I'm sure it will appear on social media so you'll be able to get the other side of it. You'll be able to hear the wonderful Shelley McRobbie uh, live on Radio Telstar International. But that's the way radio is going. It has a great, bright future. Those of you who are interested, make sure you're going to be part of it because it's all happening out there. You know, I mean, McClue obviously does have a limited lifespan, like I'm seriously considering doing another 25 years of mainstream work, radio and television broadcasting, films, writing books, all that sort of thing. And then I may, just may, look at taking early retirement and reducing my hours. But... I can promise you one thing right now, the technology will keep moving forwards, forwards, forwards. The technology will march onwards and upwards. You be part of it and thoroughly enjoy it. It's terrific stuff. So great expansion for radio and obviously great expansion for television. I would like to see this program going out uh, on a large television station late night for say half an hour or one hour and we're fully interactive on the telephones talking to you the people who really really matter at the end of the day is your good selves thanks for joining us tonight we'll catch up soon this is scotty mcclue saying dinky do to every single one of you and of course i shall sing you the song goodbye everybody goodbye 
Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of wit of vain. Au revoir and a cheerio. Take care of yourselves. Lots of love to radio. Lots of love to television. Thank you so much to the management of Radio Telstar International for interviewing Scotty McClue tonight, the first lord of the internet, the world's top broadcaster, and the world's most humble man. Dinky-doo, thank you. Shelley McRobbie. There's a name. Dinky-doo.